Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check two new products from Beta FPV. The Lite Radio 3, a compact, budget-friendly radio controller and the Express LRS version of the Meteor 85 2S Micro Quadcopter. Let's start with the Lite Radio 3. This radio controller is available in two versions, Afro Sky and Express LRS. Basically, it's an improved version of the Lite Radio 2 SE as it features a bigger battery, better gimbals, which are now also used by the recent versions of the Lite Radio 2 SE. It supports an external radio module using this Nano Module Bay. Instead of using metal switches, it uses plastic switches, which helps with the durability of the radio controller. Here is, for example, the radio controller that I gave my son to play with. And as you can see, after lots of tortures, this radio controller is a goner. So I think that this radio controller is going to be more durable because it features these plastic switches. And it also has a lanyard hook, which is something that the Light Radio 2 doesn't have. So you can use it with the next wrap. As for its weight, the Light Radio 3 weighs 244.5 grams, so it's heavier than the Light Radio 2 due to the bigger battery and foam factor. In terms of features and specs, the Light Radio 3 features improved gimbals, which feel slightly better than the ones that were used by the previous models of this radio controller. These are not whole sensor gimbals, but they are quite smooth, and they will provide you with a fair amount of stick travel considering the size of this radio controller. The gimbals are using a 3mm thread, so in case you'd like to, you can replace the stick ends, and in case you are a pincher like me, I recommend to change the stick ends to this type of stick ends by STP Hobby, as they are going to provide you with a better and more precise grip. On the bottom of the radio controller, you can find a bind button, which is used for binding the radio controller with a radio receiver, and for switching between the four available radio protocols on the FR Sky version. Next to it, there's a USB Type-C port, which is used for charging the internal 2000mAh 1S battery, for connecting the radio controller to a computer in order to use it with a flight simulator, and also for configuring the radio controller and updating its firmware using the Beta FPV Configurator tool. Next to it, you can find a Trainer port, and next to it, a setup button, which is used for entering gimbal calibration mode. As I showed you earlier, on the back side of the radio controller, you can find a nano model bay. It supports radio transmitters that are using the Crossfire protocol, like the TBS Crossfire Nano. For that, you'll need to use this adapter, which is provided with the TBS Crossfire Nano transmitter. And you can also use it with Express LRS radio models, including, of course, this one by Beta FPV. In addition, just like the previous models, the Light Radio 3 supports 8 channels. So in addition to these 4 channels, on the top side of the radio controller, you can find 2 3 positions and 2 2 position switches. As for configuring the Light Radio 3 and updating its firmware, it is done using the Beta FPV Configurator tool, which is available for Mac and Windows computers. After making sure that the radio controller is turned off, connect it to the computer using the USB Type-C connector, launch the Beta FPV Configurator tool, switch to the Radio Configurator option, and then you'll be able to update its firmware and connect the configurator to the radio controller. On both versions of the Light Radio 3, you'll be able to switch between Mode 2 and Mode 1 and set up the radio module. In case the external RF model is going to be enabled, the internal RF module must be disabled and vice versa. Since this is the Express LRS version, the Express LRS protocol can be adjusted. The maximum output power can be set to 25, 50 or 100 milliwatts. You can adjust the packet rate, the telemetry radio, enable a bind phrase, and in case you're using an SPI Express LRS radio receiver, you can use these commands in order to bind it with the radio controller. In addition, the Configurator tool is going to enable you to monitor the different channels and adjust them, restore the radio controller to the factory settings, refresh the settings, and of course, save the settings and reboot the radio controller. As for the available accessories, two neck straps are available, and also a carrying case, 
which looks quite nice and will enable you to store and carry the radio controller along with other accessories and an external nano radio model. So overall priced at about $60, which is $15 more than the Light Radio 2 SE, I think that the Light Radio 3 is a nice upgrade over the previous versions of this radio controller thanks to the slightly better gimbals, better ergonomics, more durable switches, and the bigger battery, which not only extends the walking time of the radio controller to almost 15 hours, but also makes it heavier, which in turn makes it feel better in the hands. Keep in mind though that it is an entry-level radio controller. For many users it's going to be sufficient, but for advanced pilots I don't think that it can serve as their main radio controller, and it is also using a custom version of Express LRS, which might be a no-go for some users. I haven't tested the FRSky version of this radio controller, but I think that especially because Express LRS radio protocol is becoming very popular, in case you're a beginner, I think that you should go for the Express LRS version in case you're interested in this radio controller and pair it with one of the quadcopters by Beta FPV that are using the Express LRS radio protocol, such as the Meteor 75 or the Meteor 85, which I'm just about to show you. This is going to be a great starting point in case you're a beginner, and not only if you're a beginner, maybe you're an advanced pilot that is looking for a secondary radio system that you can just throw in your backpack and you're not going to worry about it, as the price point is pretty good, $60 might not sound that cheap, but keep in mind that you're getting a radio controller and an Express LRS radio system, so the price point, in my opinion, is pretty good. Moving on to the Meteor 85, an updated version of the Beta 85 Pro 2, which was released quite a while ago. It's still a 2S micro quadcopter that uses 1103 11,000 kV motors, Gemfan 2020 propellers, and the frame remains the same, and the components that have been updated are the all-in-one flight controller that now features an integrated Express LRS radio receiver, the VTX has been upgraded to the M03 VTX, which has a maximum output power of 350 milliwatts, and it features the Cadex Ant FPV camera. In terms of packaging, inside the box, along with the quadcopter, you're getting a spare set of Gemfan 2020 propellers, a 300 milliampere 2S L3 battery, and an adapter, which is going to enable you to connect the flight controller to your computer. So you'll have to connect the JST plug to the flight controller, and on the other end, you can find a USB Type-C connector. As for its specs, again, it's using 1103 11,000 kV motors, an all-in-one F4 flight controller that features an integrated 12 amperes BLLES ESC and an integrated Express LRS radio receiver. It uses the M03 VTX and the Cadex and camera. In addition, it's using an XT30 battery connector, the battery is mounted on the bottom of the frame using an included battery velcro strap. The wheelbase of the frame is 85mm, it features a true X pattern. Without the battery, the Meteor 85 weighs 45.5 grams, and including the bundled 300mAh 2S LHV battery that should provide you with about 3 minutes of flight time, the total weight is 66.6 grams. As for setting it up, here you can see the default beta flight configuration which is, as always, linked down below, so in case you'd like to revert the settings to the original ones, you can use the included dump file. You should note that even when the Meteor 85 is going to be powered solely via the USB connector of the flight controller, the VTX is going to be powered up, so don't leave it on the bench connected to your computer for too long, as you don't want the VTX to overheat. As for binding the Meteor 85 with the Light Radio 3 or other types of Express LRS radio transmitters, you have a couple of options. In case you'd like to do it manually, you can enter binding mode either by long pressing this button while the flight controller is powered up or using the CLI in order to enter binding mode. Then you can power up the radio controller and enter binding mode by long pressing this button over here for a couple of seconds and then after releasing this button, the binding procedure is going to be initiated, indicated by this flashing red LED. 
The second and more convenient option is to use a bind phrase. For that, you'll need to use the beta flight configurator again, only in case you are using the light radio tree. Paste this value in the CLI tab after connecting the Meteor 85 to your computer. Then type save, press enter. And then after powering both Meteor 85 and light radio tree, the radio receiver is going to be automatically bound with the radio controller. Overall, after testing the Meteor 85, I can tell you that just like the Beta 85 Pro 2, this quadcopter is very fun to fly, it packs plenty of power for its size, and I like the VTX and FPV camera upgrades, as they will enable you to fly farther and also fly under low light conditions. In case you are debating which version should you get, maybe get the Meteor 75 or the Meteor 85. I think that in case you're a beginner, you should definitely go for the Meteor 75 as you are going to find it easier to fly. It is less powerful, so it is less dangerous and it is using 1S batteries. So the batteries are going to be cheaper and easier to charge in comparison to the 2S batteries of the Meteor 85. Anyway, now I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage of the Meteor 85. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.